Welcome back, y'all. I'm Camille. And I'm Gretchen. We are starting over the podcast. We're so glad that y'all are here today. Yes. Um, I believe this is our, I want to say like 38th. Really? Yeah. I thought we had more than that. <laughs> what the? Oh, I guess. <laughs> we're good. We we're, need to double yeah, up, this, girl. Double we, down. Okay. We're, we're behind, apparently, according no, to Camille. No. No, we're glad you're here. Uh, starting over, in case you're just joining us, first of all, we'd love it if you would like, share, and subscribe and all that stuff that we got to ask you to do on our YouTube channel. But, um, you know, it's really the premise. I was just talking about this on air today, uh, referring to the phrase of starting over. In life, no matter where we are, we always have the ability to start over because we can think. Yes. We always right. can change a thought. That's right. That's right. And we can always choose a different way of thinking. Yeah. Well, and isn't that, you know, when, when you really realize that you have the power to accommodate, change, stay the same, there's almost like a pause in that. You're Now you're the observer. You're not just autopilot. Yeah. When you're like, I could, I could actually change this. I could start over. I could just... Okay, I'm resetting mm-hmm. myself. I'm going to start over. You know? And it's all about like empowerment. Exactly. And yeah. that's that's what Camille and I really want to share is we want you to feel that you have a say. Yes. Like you have your own power. You are not yeah. you are not succumbing to anybody else. You have you have the ability to think. No one is thinking for you. Right. You have the ability to have a good day. You have the ability to have a bad day. Yeah, you get, only one that can control your mood is you. Right. But what if your mood is controllable? What if you can choose your mood? Right. Right. Yeah. And we can. And that's just it. We want to talk today about um, actually choices, decisions. You know, I think um, Camille and I were talking about sometimes it's really hard for people to make a decision. Yeah. And it's kind of a joke you hear all the time when when a guy asks a gal, where'd you like to go for dinner? I don't care. I don't what know. Do you want to do? Mm-hmm. But what if they really do have an opinion, but they're, mm-hmm. they're afraid to say it? What mm-hmm. are our whys of being afraid to speak what we really feel? Well, and I, I think some people, um, I, this has been an experience I've had with some clients that when they start realizing, oh, I don't have to be the victim. This doesn't have to upset me. I can actually recover from this or I can write my own story. Wow. Okay. So now it is like, well, what do I want? Who am I? I don't know. There is a realness to what the do I do now? Because if you think about it, y'all, if you've lived your life, especially your adult life where everybody's kind of just, whether it's a church that's made the decision for you on how you need to live, maybe it's a culture, it's family, it's male or woman, you know, man or woman. And everybody else has kind of told you, like, this is what we do. Yeah, this is how it's supposed this to be. This is how it is. This is what our community does. Mm-hmm. And you just, I know I've been in that situation. Yes. Yeah. I've been in religions where they're just yeah. like, this This is our This is our perimeter. This yes. is what, how you need to live within this boundary. And you literally just go like, okay. Yeah. And everybody's the same. Yeah. But you know we're not made up that way. Mm-hmm. We all mm-hmm. have our own mm-hmm. thoughts. All have our own opinions, and that's how God made us. It's yes. okay. Yeah. So at this stage um, of what we're talking about, and I don't even want to say this stage of life because this affects Any kids, mm-hmm. teenagers, mm-hmm. 20, you know, on up, you get to choose for you. Yeah. You just do, whether it's, you know, primarily we're talking about how you feel. Mm-hmm. You get to make those choices. Well, and look, if, if something's going on in your life and you're just, you, you are really introspective and you're realizing, I'm not living authentically. I'm not really being me. Mm-hmm. I have a differing opinion than my family and the religious leaders I'm with or whoever, right? My husband, my wife, my best friends. If you find yourself going through kind of a change or you're just pulled back, it just doesn't feel right to do that anymore. It's not authentic for you. Um, that's actually kind of a sign of independence. And I notice this happens with 16, 17-year-old, 18, you know, like when they're ready to leave home, they have to start thinking for themselves. They have to start determining things for themselves. And if they're not self-determined and they're still codependent on you as a parent or whatever, right. then they're going to have a harder time. Now, what happens? They pick fights. Mm-hmm. We fight with our teenagers because they need to start getting independent and they, they really want you to believe in them so they can believe in themselves and so they'll test you. But they're really testing themselves. They're testing their limits, mm-hmm. but they're testing to see if they really can make it without you. I was thinking too, I remember I lived in a neighborhood one time when my kids were younger and it was almost like there was this competition between the moms. Oh. You know, like how many Sounds how like many a religious merit right? badges, yeah. badges did your son get? Because yep. mine got all of these. and. How up to date are your scrapbooks? Oh. And uh, you know, 
well, my daughter is, you mm. know, she's in competitive dance and she made solo and all, you know, all of these things that can't stand it. it's easy to find yourself like questioning, am, am I, I doing a good it? mom? Am yeah. I doing enough? Are my yeah. kids enough? Am I, you know, is my house clean enough? And, yeah. and I think sometimes in the name of a neighborhood mm-hmm. or friendships within a community, we tend to kind of compete with each other. Oh, yeah. And that's a very toxic. lonely, toxic, toxic. place. <laughs> yeah. Because why? Why are yeah. we comparing ourselves with yeah. somebody that we're supposed to be supporting? Well, it's kind of the click thing. And like everyone's gone to high school or school. And isn't it like that? you got to have the certain fashion. you got to look a certain way, have that certain haircut, you know. But as we get older and we graduate these places and you think, start thinking for yourself, you, you just you you don't want to fit into that. I mean, there's there's times where and places where things things you need to quit, people you need to quit. Yeah. And you really can't be yourself until you do quit. Yeah, I actually was just working with a client yesterday, and we were talking about it's okay yeah. to graduate from people. Yes. And and it's okay to still love and care about them, but yeah. you're not associated because what happens is as you elevate your thinking and as you elevate yourself, you become in a level that's not above people. I'm not saying that. No. I'm saying expectations of what you desire in yourself. Yeah. If you're not getting that with that person because they're not meeting those expectations for them, it yes. doesn't feel right. Yeah. It's like, you know, when you're an honest person and you're in a room with somebody that's telling a lie, it doesn't feel right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's it awkward. just it just you just know like there's there's something off. And so when you're around somebody that maybe you've elevated and you no longer are going to tolerate somebody telling you how to think and yeah. feel or how you should do this or how you should be a mom or whatever it is. You've grown past that. It doesn't feel right. Yeah. And it's okay to leave those people. You can still love them. But you don't love, have to. You can love from a distance. Well, and you got to love yourself enough to honor what, how you're Absolutely. evolving and changing. Because you matter. Yeah. You know, and I think I think as adults, sometimes we kind of hang on to, well, what what's the group decision here? Mm-hmm. What's, the, what's the group saying we need to do? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I remember, like, if one decorating fad was in you know, something that was going around in the neighborhood, everybody felt like they had to do that too. Uh Uh-huh, yeah. You know, or maybe they they do, they have their kids and this musical instrument, oh, then I better do that too. Yeah. Um, And I spent so many years, like, Hmm. thinking that was the way to be a mother. Yeah. That was a way to parent. And all I was doing was trying to fit into a, a neighborhood that nobody was really being themselves anyway. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. It's like you remember like in junior high or high school when you had that one friend that was in a group of us. And they always chose like where we're going to go eat for yeah. lunch. They got to make the decision every time. And the rest of us were like little hens like, OK, I'll follow okay, along. Okay, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. And we can do that as adults, too. Yeah. Well, and I think we, we kind of tend to do that. But when something happens, when life, life's on us and like... You know, you get fired from a job mm-hmm. and you have to reinvent yourself. When you, when when there's a strain or a struggle or there's some sort of pain that you're dealing with, you something you got to reinvent yourself on the inside. And sometimes you hear in some communities, you know, well, if you were living right. Oh, yeah. If you were living right, then that would Jesus not Jesus would happening. not have to teach you this lesson. Or, or it's like something bad's happened. You lost your job. You mm. you're si- you have can't You're sick. Mm. Oh, man, well, I did heard you, that. You got you, cancer? You huh. deserve that. You must not that. be living you, right must have deserved that so it's and and uh, opis other people's you know issues and other people's opinions you you almost have to you have to get to the point where you just don't care and mm-hmm. not that you're insensitive but for your own survival you can't give a right you really can't abraham right. hicks actually talks about that you should really get to the part where you give a flying rat's ass mm-hmm. about what anybody thinks about how you're living your life yeah because, you know, we teach our kids, hey, be independent. Think for yourself. Don't go with just whatever all the crowds yeah. are doing. But we get as adults, and sometimes we have a really hard time making that decision. Mm-hmm. What am I? Who am I? What do I believe? Yeah. And if I believe and I state, I think you see this a lot, but a lot of times when people are divorced mm-hmm. and they're re-getting to know themselves maybe for the first time in 30 or 20 years or whatever it's been, you know, they don't they don't know how to do that. Yeah. Because they've been in a situation where somebody else has already thought for them. Yeah. They're Decided for them. They're making those mm-hmm. decisions from mm-hmm. based on what somebody else agrees is good or not. Well, it takes courage to start over. 
It takes a lot of courage to quit people, quit places, quit things, and start over. And that's, but yet you have the power to do so. And that's what we're really trying to say is, yeah. you know, it, it isn't like it's going to be easy. Sometimes it is easy just to go, you know, I walk away, I'm done. But when you've got people, and, and I had this experience actually th this week, young kid, his brother always sees him as, you know, uh, uh, he calls him a drama queen. So he's always drama. He's always doing something that looks like he's just seeking attention. And my client is trying to kind of reinvent himself and have different dialogue with his family. But he's he's typecast. He's seen his little mm -hmm. brother. You're never going to amount to anything. And that was purely clear today. Like literally the text messages. Look, this is just how you are, dude. You know, I can't see you any other way. Literally said that to his brother. And I'm like, okay, now you pull back. What does that do to you? Right. If you really feel like you're stuck in that identity, mm -hmm. you're wearing that hat all the time, that's just how he sees you. His perception of you is this. Is that true? Well, it always has been true. So he throws a race of his life. He doesn't win. He plays small. And so he's got a choice to make because he's at a crossroad. Are you going to continue to live to make your brother feel comfortable? Or are you going to live for, for you? So he's starting to pull away. He's got this girl that's helping him, you know, expand a business. He's trying to make lots of money. And his brother, I think, is uncomfortable, nine years older. But I'm watching the power as he steps into his authentic self. And he has to quit caring what his brother or other family thinks Anybody. of Anybody. To yeah. be able to win. Mm -hmm. And so, if you, you know, you mm -hmm. might be out there thinking, I can't start over. I can't change. We've had this. A few people have sent us in questions and stuff. Well, what do I do when I can't change? I mean, I got this going on. I got that going on. A lot of it's about the judgment of others. We're terrified of the judgment of others, mm -hmm. of what they're going to think of us, what they're going to say to us, or they're going to say to our family, and or they're going to make us look bad because we want to change, right? Yeah. And I'm not saying just run out and quit doing whatever. You've got to be strategic about it. Sure. But you have to be, look, at some point, to thine own self be true. That's where we all have to get. One of the techniques that Camille and I teach is the mirror effect, where you, you actually, without anybody around, you look in the mirror, you look in your left eye, and you look to know who you are. Yeah. You learn to talk to yourself. You learn to say, you're not going to go down the road of, I wish I was 10 pounds thinner, or I wish I had this, or I wish I had hair, or whatever mm -hmm. it is. You're actually going to say, you know what? I really love my heart. I really love how I love people. And I really love how my teeth are shaped. You find things yeah. about you. You get to know who you are, where you trust. You trust your opinion. You trust what you think, that you don't have to sit and depend upon somebody else deciding yeah. for you. Yeah. Very we good. talked about this. Uh, you know, 10% of our brain is what we think of and what we function on mm -hmm. in life. Amazing. But the 90% is your subconscious thoughts. And subconscious thoughts are primarily made up of ideas that we have been told. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So, again. Someone uh, else's opinion. Someone else's opinion. Or, or you know, I'm, I'm just a product of my environment. Yeah, um, this is I'm, how I am. I've always been overweight or... Money never is easy for me. These are narratives that we have told ourselves that subconsciously yeah. we think about, we marinate on it, we talk about it all the time, and that's what keeps showing up in our life. Well, and that's what's true for us, right? If we keep living that world and then what we sp what we put out there comes back. That's we exactly, see it. yeah, there's yeah. evidence of that. So, yeah. well, yeah, that's true. Right. But how do you make a change? You have to pull back and start over and say, what results do I want in this area? Right. And there's a process to go through to do that, but you have to realize that it's possible to change. At, at, at all any time. That's yeah. why starting over is so important. So as you pull apart these beliefs that no longer are serving you, yeah. now you have a hole that you want to fill. So what do you want to do? You want to fill it with positive stuff, which is why the mirror therapy is so important. Mm -hmm. Or affirmations when you believe them. Words don't matter, but when you really believe them. It's the energy, yeah. Start with something small. Like, you know yeah. what? Like... I am really good at, I'm really good at driving. I'm really good at cooking. I'm really, you know, it yes. doesn't matter what yeah. it is. It's not for anybody else to agree with. No. Or to, you know, confer, like, yes, you are. No, no, actually you're not. You're. This is no. not about somebody else. Not this about. is how you yeah. get your own power where you can say definitively, this is what I, I made this decision. This is how I feel. This is how I am. This is what I'm doing. Yes. Because it feels right with you. Yes. That's Even right. people that come across and they're really, you know, that I think not to go down politic road, but if you think about Trump, he's very strong in how he feels. Yes. He's very adamant and he's very conscientious about, look, this is how I feel. I'm not going to apologize for it. That's right. Right. So you know where you stand with that, that mm -hmm. guy. Mm-hmm. 
we need to be at a place in our lives where we have convictions. Yeah. Like, I don't need to be talked out of something. Mm-mm. Or I talked into something. Or talked or, into something. Mm-mm. Gravity is what it is. You right. can't convince me gravity isn't what it is. I just know that it is what it is, right? Yes. And yes. so I'm very firm in that. What else are you firm in? Yes. What else do you really believe in that, that is core to you? Well, and people, I think, have grown up w- w- without the ability to say no. If they yes. told their parents oh, no, offensive. yes, mm-hmm. or no, that's what our religion that you have to go along with. You won't belong to us if you push back mm-hmm. and say no. But what if there's a time to say no? What if you saying no to them is saying yes to yourself? Exactly. And that yeah. has to happen, y'all. That is that is critical in gaining your own power because okay. when you don't say no or you don't say yes and you want to, yeah, you automatically said to yourself, I don't have that power. I don't believe in myself. I'm not strong enough to do that. Yeah. And it doesn't matter how much you've made that person happy. Mm -mm. You haven't put any deposits into you. Yeah. And you can't have your confidence. You can't move forward with conviction on how you feel and what you believe and what you, you know to be true to your core unless you start with your own decisions. And I think a great place to start with what we do with our clients is, look, you have to look at what you're doing purely out of obligation. I have to, or I'm gonna, my mother's gonna be upset if I don't show every Sunday dinner. You you have to look at what you're doing only because other people want you to. Right. And you really don't want to. And I'm not saying quit everything at once because that's gonna overwhelm you. You're gonna get a lot of hate in text. <laughs> but if you're doing something just purely out of obligation and duty to that other person or there's some sort of you know routine to it, if you're done with it and you know you're done with it, that's where you start being authentic with yourself. And you start making a list of things I'm, I'm purely doing as a pleaser. I wanna make people happy. Because and, and we don't quit as a society, Americans, we don't quit. We're going to stay the course. We're going to stay forever. Right, right. But I'm telling you, there's a time and a season to quit people and quit things. And if you never do, then you will never evolve to the next level. And what we're mm-hmm. talking about here is once you get really true and authentic about yourself, and it doesn't have to be mean or ugly. You don't have to really try and hurt anybody. It's just speaking from your own core. Your calling, who you really are, shows up after that. It's like yeah. you start developing yourself, and, and you can't live a lie anymore. Mm-hmm. Like when you can't live a lie anymore... I'm telling you, the universe matches you and it says, okay, you're, now you're being authentic. You're being you. I want, there's an opportunity here for you. It will level you up in all areas, I Everything. promise. And that's where your confidence comes in. And yeah. then you'll never, ever again deny yourself. Yeah. You'll never, ever again agree with something yeah. that doesn't feel right to you because you know, just like gravity, you yeah. know what it is. You know what it is, right? And, and there's you, power in the truth. And every time you yeah. feel that power, you gain more confidence. And when you gain more yeah. confidence, and you're knowing who you are. You're knowing your value and your worth, not to somebody else, yeah. but to who you and God have, what, what that relationship. That alignment. That yeah. alignment. That's what, right. That's what right. is, like, yeah. this is what it is. It, this is the part of starting over yeah. that we're talking about. You're never doomed, ever. No, no. Ever. Well, and I, I think the truth does set us free. And I, I am just amazed at the magic of telling the full truth. Like when you're in a relationship and you're really holding back and you're not really being authentic, both sides are doing that. Okay, if you're doing yeah. that, that other person's doing it. You don't yeah. feel like you can be yourself. Yeah. But when you can speak your truth and you're authentically saying, again, not in a mean way, this is where I'm at. Mm-hmm. That person has to see you newly. And, and how you keep a relationship going that's healthy is you continue to be authentic and honest. Yeah, you and you choose true. it. You yeah. choose every day if you're going to be with that person. You're going to you're going to choose to be truthful, and you got to be with someone that wants you to be authentic and truthful. Mm-hmm. And so, if that does isn't happening, can't happen, you know, maybe you got to get authentic and see what works for you. See what works for you. We appreciate yeah. y'all being here. Uh, Starting over podcast is what we're doing. Um, yeah. We do have a YouTube channel as well. So, thank you guys, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Okay.